Hi, welcome to Sholey Physics episode on statics, and we're going to be applying Newton's second law. This is one of my favorite topics in physics because you can learn so much from physical scenarios by the forces involved. And also, Newton's second law reveals so much about the scenario that once you're done, you can look back and realize that you didn't really have to know what's going on. You didn't really have to know what's happening. You actually get to rely on one of these laws of motion to come up with your entire answer. So just knowing a process and learning how to do this process is what scores you the big points every time. That's why I love this process. So our big focus today is in applying Newton's second law. Sum of the forces equals MA and everything is revolving around this expression. Now today we're gonna to feature statics and static means unchanging, unchanging. So when we're talking about motion, if motion is not changing, what that means is acceleration is zero. So we're only looking at situations where acceleration is zero. And there's two kinds of cases when this happens. Uh, case number one is when you've got an at rest kind of motion, where an objects are at rest. You have zero acceleration. Uh, velocity is not increasing or e decreasing, it's remaining the same. And with that in mind, there's another scenario where acceleration is zero, and that's where you have constant velocity. The very definition of acceleration is a rate of change in velocity. So if velocity is not changing, you've got zero acceleration. So what does that also imply according to Newton's second law? If acceleration is zero, all objects have mass, so mass can't be zero, but what's that mean about the sum of the forces? It means you either have no forces acting on an object to give you zero acceleration, or all of the forces are balanced. So another scenario where you have a static situation is when the object is in equilibrium. And equilibrium is also when the sum of all the forces acting on the body equal zero. So it's not only uh, balanced forces in the, in the y direction, but also balanced forces in the x direction. Okay, so equilibrium, all the forces equal zero. This means you, we have completely balanced forces. And I want you to get that down. Completely, completely balanced forces. There's a lot of situations where all this takes place. Buildings need to stay up. They don't want, you don't want those accelerating. Bridges, you want those to stay up. You don't want them swinging side to side and flipping cars off of them. Okay, so that's just a, a couple of them. Now you think of as many as you can where you've got balanced forces. Right now you're likely sitting in a chair or maybe you're standing up watching. But uh, all in all, you're in equilibrium. You've got a static scenario happening to you right now. So statics, that's what we're looking at today where acceleration is zero. Now I'm gonna take you through a problem solving boot camp. The wonderful thing about boot camp is it trains you to do the first step, the second step, all the way to the end, and you can do it right and efficiently and quickly every single time as you practice it and do it. So the beautiful thing about this is when you're solving problems using Newton's second law, if you know this process and you practice it and you get good at it, then whatever situation comes up, you'll know how to get started. Even if you don't know what the end's gonna look like, you're gonna know what to do in the middle and you're gonna, know, you're gonna know how to finish hard, finish well, okay? So I promise you all those things if you practice. So here is a scenario. Thomas owns a vegetable stand and Thomas wants to hang a sign. All right, Thomas's veggies. And he's gonna hang that sign over a nice, beautiful display of vegetables just sitting on a, on a table here. He's gonna display them. They're gonna look nice and fresh and wonderful to people passing by. And they're gonna look up at the sign and say, Thomas, now that's a guy I can trust for my veggies. So here's Thomas's veggies, and he wants to hang this sign from the roof. But the thing is, Thomas is concerned. He doesn't want that sign falling on any of his 
potential patrons. You know, you get lawsuits and maybe they don't come back and buy his veggies. So he's got this fairly heavy sign. It's, it's three kilograms. It's a three kilogram sign. And wind can blow it. Uh, what weather can wear at it. So what he wants to do is make sure that the cables that he's hanging them with aren't going to fail. Now he can hang this thing up with fishing line. But as you can imagine, fishing line can snap and that's going to break. He doesn't actually want to use like these industrial grade heavy chain links because that doesn't look so um, you know appealing to people buying veggies and it's probably a little over overkill so he needs to find some cables that are going to support the weight they're going to work uh, in in weather when it, when the wind's blowing and storms are storms are coming by he doesn't want the you know the sign and cables to break so he's got to find some cables that are strong enough all in all we've got to know how much force might be applied to these cables to keep them from snapping. Bam, we've got a static scenario. We want this sign to stay still. So what are we gonna do? Well, we got the setup. Next. What I've got here is that problem solving boot camp scenario. This is what I want going through your head every single time. This gives you directions to start, gives you directions to do what's, what's in the middle and and directions on how to finish. If you follow this every single time, you're going to come up with a solution no matter what. Now, sometimes there are some errors in the middle and you learn to get better at that and uh, discipline yourself, but this gets you started every single time. When you practice this, you'll know what to do. So that's what we're trying to do. The first thing we're gonna do, number one, is draw a force diagram of the sign. We're gonna label the force vector errors for all the forces that we know. All the unknown forces that we're looking for. In this case, we're going to look for the tension force in each of those cables. And also, if there are any angles on those forces, we're going to label those. We're also going to provide values that we know of for all the knowns and identify what our targets are. If we set all this up, we can set the problem aside, especially if it's a word problem, and just look at what's in front of us. We'll have everything we need to solve. So let me demo demonstrate this first step. Draw a force diagram, label all the knowns, and identify the unknowns. So guess what this is? This is Thomas's sign. There are two cables on this sign, and as you, as you can see, they're, they're, they're going to be distributed kind of evenly, symmetrically along this sign. So um, it's, it's not likely that one cable is going to be holding more of the weight than the other. They're sharing. We're going to assume that they're going to share, uh, share the weight of this sign. All in all, you can see that the, the sign is attached by two cables. To the to the roof to the ceiling there called an awning if you will so there's going to be two cables pulling up on this sign and i'm going to label each of those because i don't know what they are you can only label them f sub t i'm just going to use a capital t as the unknown and there's there's two tensions now i'm going to label them both the same letter t not t1 or t2 because i'm assuming that they're going to support uh, an equal amount of the sign's weight. And speaking to that, the sign has a weight to it. Now I gotta think that since those cables are, are holding, uh, are sharing that weight, that, that the weight's gonna be longer than some of those. Now you don't have to know that, I just know from experience that that's what it's gonna look like. As long as you've got a downward arrow there and label it something like weight or force due to gravity, that's great. So there's some labels. Now, what about some known values? We have the mass of the sign is three kilograms. So if we know the mass, do we know the weight? At this point, if you think back and recall that weight is mass times 9.8, mass times acceleration due to gravity, you can actually label this value right now before we move on. And that way you know later on that you've got this value and you don't have to worry about it anymore. So we take three, as the kil uh, mass in kilograms and 9.8 meters per second squared as the assumed acceleration due to gravity on the surface of the planet. And we get 29.4 newtons. So that's the weight of the sign. I've got it right there. Okay, now I'm gonna take that circle off because that's not our, our target. But we know the weight is 29.4. We don't know what the, what the tensions are and that's actually what we're looking for. How much tension is gonna be in each of those cables when the sign is just hanging there. So I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna write that next to it. I've identified the target variable. 
So I believe so far I've, I've completed step one. We drew the force diagram, labeled the, the vectors with knowns, the unknowns. There's no angles involved here. Provided values for the knowns. There's the weight and identified the target variable. So the next thing we're going to do, we're going to consider, are there any angled forces that we need to worry about? Now angles, what I'm talking about here is uh, if there's any forces that are not in the y direction, the vertical direction, or the x direction, the horizontal. Um, if there are any forces that are kind of angled and up into the, to the right or down into the left, we're going to have to split them apart into their x and y components. But right now, we've just got all the forces in the y direction. So we're actually done with step number two. There are no angled forces, which means we get to move on to step three. This is where Newton's second law gets applied. And that's why we do this setup that you're going to see in these steps. We're trying to get to a place where we can apply Newton's second law because Newton's second law is the equation. It's going to give us the equality that allows us to apply some algebra to determine unknowns. The sum of all the forces acting on a body equals mass times acceleration. Now this expression works as a vector. Forces are vectors and accelerations are vectors. And that's a little symbol that means a vector. It has a, a, a quantity and a direction to it. Now that's really for another class. I'm not going to worry about vector notation right now. But how we're going to represent vectors is in this expression, we're going to start by thinking about the x direction and also the y direction. See in this third step, it instructs us to apply Newton's second law in both the x and the y directions. So let me take the text off here so you can see it. And the sum of the forces in the x direction, we got m times acceleration in the x direction. And for the y, sum of the forces in the y direction, that's how it reads, equals mass times acceleration in the y direction. Now I've thrown in a symbol here, this Greek letter sigma, it means the, the sum of. So this whole expression reads sum of the forces in the x direction equals mass times acceleration in the x direction. That's how we're accounting for directions. All right, that's just to introduce this next step. So number three, let's read it over again. Apply Newton's second law, F net, or in other words, sigma F, that's the net force, in both the x and the y directions. And if you haven't yet, we're going to be sub uh, taking a moment to substitute expressions for forces where appropriate. For example, Fg, gravity equals mass times 9.8. Um, later on in the course, you're going to learn about friction. So in, at this point, if there is friction involved, you would include that as well. Um, but mainly, we're just sticking to the x and the y direction application for Newton's second law. All right, so we're ready to do this. Now, in this, ex in this case, there is no x direction. There are no forces in that x direction. There's only forces in the y direction. So we get to just focus on summing the forces in the y direction. Whether we know them as numbers or don't know them as variables or unknowns, we should say, um, we're going to include that in the expression. So here we go. And on this force diagram in the y direction, we're considering only the y forces, and that's all the kind of forces we have in this case. There are two tensions going up. So when we sum them, because they're in the same direction, we're going to write tension plus tension, T plus T. They both go in the up direction. So I'm using, uh, by the way, I'm using up as positive. You can pick whatever direction you want to be positive. If a result turns out to be negative, you know the result is in the downward direction if you define up as positive. So as up is defined as positive, we have T plus T plus a negative 29.4. In other words, we're going to subtract 29.4 newtons because the weight works against those two tensions. And that's it. Those are the three forces. What we have done is we've just summed them all up to produce this result. These three together are an expression that is the sum of the forces in the y direction. That's what we replace that sigma Fy with, is T plus T minus 29.4. Now we have the equal sign, which is rewritten down here. 
And we're going to have mass times acceleration. So here's where we get the mass comes back in here. We're going to write 3 as the mass. And then, uh, wait a second. What is the acceleration in the y direction going to be? Well, I think Thomas doesn't want it flipping off its, its cords and hitting people. So Thomas wants the acceleration of the sine to equal 0 all the time. That's where statics comes in. Static means acceleration is zero. This is a static scenario. So Thomas wants zero acceleration to a sign. He doesn't want it coming loose. That's how we know acceleration is zero because it's static. All right. What did we just do? Well, let's see. Let's go back to that problem solving process, see if we miss anything. We applied number three, we applied Newton's second law. F net equals MA, or sigma F, was mass times acceleration in the y direction, because there was no x direction. And now, number four, solve the system equations. Well, we have one equation here. Let's see if we can solve it for the unknown. All right, click that off there. All right, can we simplify this a little bit? What's, what's T plus T? Well, if you have X plus X, that equals 2X. So T plus T is 2T minus 29.4 equals 3 times 0 is 0. All right. It looks like we can solve this, can't we? If we add 29.4 to both sides, then we'd have 2t equals 29.4. And look at this. The tension of one of those cables is equal to half the total weight. Isn't that what you'd expect? You see, you could have probably figured this out in the beginning without apl applying Newton's second law. But applying Newton's second law always works, and it always reveals some kind of little truth about the situation. In this situation, with two cables that are evenly distributed, they're going to share the weight equally. Tension is 29.4 divided by 2, and that gives us 14.4. No, wait a second. Yeah, 14. <laughs> uh, um, seven. <laughs> it took me a while to get that one. Okay, 14.7. Now we guys, 28 times 2. Four. Yeah, there we go. 14.7 <laughs> Newtons. Say it loud and proud, Charlie. Okay, so each one of those carries half the weight. All right, now let's move on to something that has angles. Across the street moves in some competition. You see, Thomas is doing so well, someone's noticed. This guy named Prince Charles, he comes along and, and tries to open up a fancy veggie stand. So there's going to be some mean competition here on this street. Prince Charles, he's got a corner market. He's also trying to corner the market. <laughs> okay, so having a corner market, Prince Charles, that's actually his first name, is given to him, Prince and Charles. Prince Charles sets up a veggie selection on the side of his business, right over here. And just to protect it from the elements, he puts out an awning. Okay, so that's a, a bar that goes out like this with a, with a covering that goes up something like that. So here, this, this is a little cable right here. This is a cable. And it's going to hold on to the sign. Now, uh, oops, I, I guess I should extend this out a little bit further because yeah, he's, he's, got, he's got a double layered, um, actually triple layered uh, vegetable stand here with, with lots of vegetables. He's trying to, trying to outdo the competition. And at the end of the sign, sorry, out at the end of the awning, he puts a sign. And it, it gives a name. So he's trying to sell some cucumbers here. So he's got a sign. Prince Charles says has some cukes. And he's got a price on them, you know, 50 cents or something like that. He's really selling them high priced here. So cukes, 50 cents. And that's 50 cents each, by the way. Not like, not like a pound. So anyway, I don't know. That might be better, you know, 50 cents a pound. I don't know how cukes weigh out, but it doesn't matter. Because he's still got a three kilogram sign way out here at the end of this awning. 
He's got to make sure this awning doesn't fall over because there's this heavy sign at the end. So uh, what's the tension in this cable going to be? Now we measure this, this angle here and it turns out to be 15 degrees. There's a 15 degree angle here. And there's a cable holding this awning up, pulling this point at the end inward. You see, there's a beam right here. And it's kind of like if you hold out your arm like this, nice and straight at the very end, your hand has to actually push this out. You see, if this, this beam breaks, beam, B-E-A-M, if this breaks right here, then the whole awning and, and cables are going to come, and the sign are going to come crashing down this way. They're going to swing towards the wall, probably hit some people or destroy his vegetables. You know, there's going to be cucumber carnage everywhere. So we got to make sure that doesn't happen. Anyhow, this beam, this awning, actually pushes outward. And we can't really see this. It's not a physical thing that, that extends out here. But what I'm trying to indicate here is there's a force, uh, kind of a compression force. You see, if, the, if this cable is pulling up and to the right, kind of up and in, that means there has to be a force pushing out. And so when you pull something in and it doesn't allow it to go in, it gets compressed and it pushes back out. Sort of like a, a squishy spring. When you, when, you, when you squeeze the spring inward, it wants to push back out and bounce back out to, to its shape. So I'm going to call a C for like a compression force. All right. T is the, the tension in the cable going up at, at an angle. And uh, what's it trying to hold up? The, the weight of the sign. There's going to be some weight pulling it down here. So really where, where all this force is coming together is at the end of this awning. And by the way, we do just have one single little cable here holding up a sign. Um, we're really looking at the, the, the greater tension, which is going to be in this cable up here. So these are our two unknowns, the compression in the beam and the tension in the cable. And there's also going to be a weight from this sign. Let's see how they all come together. I'm going to take away a, a little bit of this description here so we see the we see the more physical look. And next we're gonna create a force diagram and use this space effectively over here. I'm gonna focus in at this little point right here where all these forces are converging. All right, so there's a step one, draw a force diagram labeling all those force vector arrows and uh, with unknowns if we need to label those unknowns, and also label it with the known values if we can. So there's going to be the weight of the sign pulling down, and that's going to be the same as before, that 29.4 newtons. All right, that weight is equal to mg. Um, now there's also this tension force. I'm going to label that T. I'm going to give a little dashed line here to indicate that this is a 15 degree angle. And then there's going to be this, this beam pushing outward, like I described. And that's going to be a horizontal force pushing straight out. There's no angle there. All right. So what can we do? We can try to figure out the value of the tension in that cable and also the compression force of that beam. Let's see where we are. Problem solving text. Did we draw a force diagram, label the... The force vector arrows with all un the known forces, unknown forces, and angles. We provide values for all knowns and identify target variables. Ah, I got to identify the target. So let's look for T and let's look for C. Good. And the only thing I know right now is the weight. The weight is, is 3 times 9.8. Just give a little reminder of what that is. Mg. All right, so that's where we got the 29.4. Okay, step two. This time we have an angled force. This tension is going off at an angle. Now we don't know how much the tension T is yet. That's actually an unknown. An unknown. Uh, I can't say that word, unknown. There we go. But it is at a, at a measured angle, 15 degrees. So we can, um, we can use that. Draw a new force diagram to reflect only the vertical and horizontal force or force components. Let's do it. So I'm going to draw a new force diagram now with the weight going down, 29.4. Also simplifies it a little bit. Doesn't look as busy. 
Now C is a horizontal force, so I'm gonna leave it. 29.4 is the, the weight, it's a vertical force, it's good, it's already in the y direction. C is already in the negative x direction, it's kind of going to the, to the left in that um, negative x direction. Now what about T? T is an angled force. So what we're gonna do is replace T with two components. See, T goes off to the right, but it also goes up. So we're gonna break that T apart into its two components. We won't know exactly how much they are, but we're gonna have a piece of them. So there's going to be a piece of T going to the right and a piece of T going up. So what do we label on this new diagram? This is not T and T, all right? It won't blow up. I mean, not that kind of T and T. This is not just T, but it's a piece of T, a percentage or a, a fraction of that tension force going up into the, into the right. So what we're gonna do is imagine this force vector T as the hypotenuse of a right triangle the hypotenuse has the, the amount t, or the length, and there's a horizontal component to that represented by this piece, and there's a vertical component represented by this piece, and we're going to draw that vertical component like so, right there, and fill in the angle of 15 degrees. Now, if the angle is 15 degrees and the hypotenuse is t, what are these two sides going to be? Well, this side down here is adjacent to the 15 degree angle, and the vertical side over here is opposite the 15 degree angle. So the adjacent side gets the cosine function, and the opposite side gets the sine function. What would go in front? The hypotenuse, and what goes in the end? The angle. T cosine 15 would be that horizontal component, and T sine 15 degrees would be the vertical component. Now, if you're going, Sholy, what the heck did you just do? Well, it's coming back to a little bit of trig. If we're looking for the adjacent side of a triangle, a right triangle, and the opposite side, given an angle, then recall that the cosine of an angle is equal to the adjacent side length divided by the hypotenuse. So in this case, what would that look like? The adjacent side is what we're looking for. The hypotenuse turns out to be the unknown tension T. So we're just gonna leave it as T, the unknown. And when we multiply both sides by T to solve for what the adjacent side is gonna be, the T's cancel on this side and we get T cosine of the angle. Likewise, the opposite side works with the sine function. So just in conclusion, we get a T cosine 15 for this side and a T sine 15 for the top. There it is. Okay. So this is a bunch of extra, a little bit of explanation. You definitely don't need to show that when you're doing these problems. All I like to do is go, oh, the angle touches the horizontal piece. That makes it the cosine. That, that also makes the opposite side the sine. T cosine 15, T sine 15. Bam, I'm ready to move on. Three, apply Newton's second law in the X and the Y directions. Let's do that. So this is all I'm focusing on right here. I can throw everything out the window. We're about to solve for T and C. We're gonna sum the forces in the X direction. And we're gonna sum the forces in the Y direction, just like before. Now, in the first example, we didn't have an x direction, but in this time, this case, we do. All right, which one you, can you do first? You can either you can do either one first, really. I like to look at the the direction that has numbers in it, because that makes it all a little more efficient to solve in the end. What I mean is, twenty nine point four is the only complete value here that that doesn't have an unknown. So that's what I mean by number. Twenty nine point four is the number. So I'm just going to start with the y direction. Upward, I've got t sine 15. So I'm just gonna rewrite that. Downward, I've got the force 29.4 from the weight. So t sine 15 
minus 29.4 is going to be the sum of the forces in the y direction. And remember, this is static. Prince Charles doesn't want this sign falling on his clientele. So he's going to have an acceleration or demand an acceleration of zero. You know, he's a bit loud, especially in class. I'm just kidding. So a mass is three and the acceleration is zero. All right. So what can we do with this? We got a T sine 15 degrees. And if we add 29.4 to both sides, we've got a zero over here. That'll give us a T sine 15 degrees equals 29.4. So algebraically, we're adding 29.4 to both sides to get this step here. Now, if you plug in your calculator, what is sine 15, if you're unfamiliar with that? Sine 15 is 25.2588. So you can replace that sine of 15 with an actual number, 0.2588. I'll just do 0.259, I like three significant figures, equals 29.4. And then divide. We're going to get the tension, 0.259. Divide it out of there. And we find the tension is equal to... 29.4 divided by that answer. 113.59, let's say 114 newtons. Wow, even though the weight's only 29.4 newtons, this tension has 114 newtons in it. Gotta make sure that's a pretty strong cable. But that's not it. We have two unknowns we're looking for. That's why this is called a system of equations. If you get to doing this, you're actually doing some Algebra 2 here. If you haven't had some Algebra 2 yet, you really get into systems of equations in Algebra 2 when there's more than one unknown. And that's what two equations allow us to do. We've just run through one, and now we're going to take a look at a second one. So we've already solved for the tension. Now what about the compression? Well, that's going to come from the x direction. We have C going to the left and T cosine 15 to the right. If I start out with that T cosine 15, as we sum the forces in just the X direction now, so we're only looking at these forces now, I have T cosine 15 to the right minus C to the left equals mass times, again, Prince Charles wants this to be a zero acceleration. So mass times zero. Now we have the tension. And that's why I like to start with the, the side with a number first was because you're going to get a number out of it. And we can actually plug that in here. The tension is 114. We'll multiply that by cosine of 15 degrees minus C equals zero. I'm going to add C to both sides. That'll give us a C equals expression. So C equals 114 cosine, cosine 15. I'm going to go ahead and calculate that out. 114 cosine of 15 degrees, 110 newtons, 110.1. And now we are done. We've found both unknowns by applying Newton's second law. Do you see how it just takes you there? You're along for the ride. If you follow this method, and practice each step. That's the hardest part to, to figure out how to do, is just practicing those steps and understanding what sums of forces mean. Well, once you get that, it gets you to the answer. You don't even have to think about what to do next. You just follow that, that process. Now I'm gonna do one more scenario. And this one's not related to the veggie stand. But let's just say we have that same sign and uh, we got sort of a unconventional way to, way to hold it up, okay? So we're, we're gonna take that same three kilogram mass. I'll just make it a, a generic three kilogram mass here this time. Now I'm gonna have two tensions. They're gonna be at uh, sort of different angles here, okay? All right, so this is how we're holding it. You'll notice that the angle that these two make 
is a different angle. They're not supporting the same amount of weight. This one's more vertical, this one's more horizontal. Let me give this some, some angle here. So if this is 45 degree angle, and this one's a 30 degree angle, let's try that. What will be the tension in each one of these cables? Now I can't just label them T and T because we're, we have two different, possibly different tensions here. So I'm gonna label this tension one and this one over here, tension two. All right, that's our scenario, more drawn out, but I'm gonna, again, recreate it on a force diagram. There's the weight pulling down. Weight is mg, which is three times 9.8. I'm using three in all cases here just so it's familiar and you can compare them. But that mass might be different. It might be five kilograms or 10 kilograms or a thousand if it's something like a car. Of course, I hope you wouldn't uh, suspend a car from two tension cables like this. All right. So again, we're going to have a 29.4 Newton mass there. And now we've got a tension two going up this way at an angle of 45 degrees. and a tension one at an angle of 30 degrees. All right, that's our first step. Uh, we're gonna solve for tension one and tension two. Let's figure out what those amounts are gonna be as our target. We've completed step one. We drew the force diagram, labeled everything, identified everything. Step two, resolve these into their X and Y components. You see, we can't add and subtract vectors that aren't in the same or opposite directions. We've got to get them all in the same or the opposite directions. So I'm going to redraw the force diagram. Still have 29.4 completely in the vertical direction. So I'm going to leave 29.4 there. All right, now I've got this tension one over here and tension two over here. Tension one pulls left and up. So I'm going to replace that with a left component and an up component. Which one is this going to be? Well, the side coming out this way is adjacent to the 30 degree angle. So the horizontal piece is going to be the cosine. And that makes the vertical piece the sine. The force is tension one and the angle is 30 degrees. And we have tension one sine 30 up here. So those are the two components. I'll turn my calculator off, it's freaking out a little bit. Okay. Now let's switch over to tension two. Tension two pulls up and to the right. So it's going to have an upward component and a right hand component. Notice I'm kind of making them the same. Now this this upward component may be a little bit different, um, but I'm pretty sure the right hand component is going to be the same as this one because those are the only forces going left and right. And we want this thing to, to have zero acceleration. We want it to be static. We don't want it to move. Anyhow, the lengths don't matter. You go ahead and draw them as you're practicing. That'll come with experience. Uh, again, on this one, the right-hand component will be the adjacent piece of the triangle. If we can imagine a triangle like this, that right-hand component is adjacent to the 45 degree angle. So that side is going to be the cosine and that'll make the upward component the sine. In this case, it's tension two. So this will be T2, cosine of 45 degrees. And that'll make this one T2, sine of 45. All right, looking messy now, isn't it? However, this is the only thing we need to concentrate on now. That's it, we've got all the information we need here. Step three. Sum the forces in the x direction, equal mAx. Sum the forces in the y direction. And right now, you might notice that we're just making all the acceleration zero because we've got static scenarios. Please write it out shortly. You're going to be finding out and looking, uh, studying scenarios that have a non-zero acceleration. So you wanna be used to doing this process. You won't need to do anything different. The only difference with those is the acceleration won't be zero. It might be an unknown that you're looking for, or it might be the value that's given to you, but you'll need to know where the acceleration gets involved. So go ahead and write these expressions down and get used to using them. 
so that you're doing the same exact process every time and you get to know this process. It's a, it's a big help. Airline pilots, that's how they land actually. It's a process. I need to approach the flight pattern. I need to insert in the flight pattern uh, above, a, above an airport if I'm gonna land at a certain altitude. I've gotta set my airspeed to this. I gotta set my flaps to this. It's a process and it sets up the airplane for success and a landing. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to land this thing and set it up for success. In the X direction, let's start with that. Um, actually, before I've said, uh, let's start with the, the one with the number. So I'll do the same thing here. It's actually, uh, we're actually going to have a couple of unknowns in the end, but I'll, I'll do what I, start, I said I'd start with anyway. So T1 sine 30 goes up, T2 sine 45 goes up, and 29.4 goes down. So there's going to be a lot going on here. Just have patience and write it out. T sine 31 is up, plus T2 sine 45 is also up. But 29.4 is down, so we're going to subtract that from the up forces. Two up arrows minus one down arrow equals mass times, again, we want to hold this at rest. It's static, so zero acceleration. Can I solve for anything here? No. I got to pause because I don't, I have two unknowns. I can't really solve for one of them. I can simplify this a little bit. If we add 29.4 to both sides, three times zero, zero plus 29.4. That does give us a T1 sine 30 plus T2 sine 45 equals 29.4 equals the weight. So those two components equal the weight, but we don't know what each component is yet. Can make this a little easier to look at also. If we've got sine 30, sine of 30 is, is a number, it's 0.5. I always remember that one. Sine of 30 is a half. Bring the calculator back up. Okay, here we go. And bring the calculator into view. Good. So sine 30, if you plug it in, is 0 0.5, if you're unfamiliar with it. Again, make sure your mode is in degrees. If you're getting different numbers, it's because your calculator mode is probably in radians instead of degrees. So make sure you switch to degrees. And then uh, sine of 45, it's 0 0.707. I'll just say 0.71. All right. So you see, we can't really solve for anything. There's two unknowns. So when you get stuck, don't stop. We're going to head on over to the x direction. Over here in the x, we've got t1 cosine 30 to the left minus t2 cosine 40 to the 45 to the right. And if you're wondering why did you start with the left first, um, it's it's arbitrary. It doesn't matter. Pick a direction, especially in this case, because the acceleration is zero. All right, all the side is zero over here. The only thing we can do here is add one of these to the other side. We'll bring it over. That cancels it out here. And we get T1 cos 30 equals T2 cos 45. Okay, we get a comparison between tension one and tension two. Let's go ahead and get those ugly cosines out of there. Cosine 30 is 0 0.866. I'll call that 0.87. And uh, cosine 45 is actually the sine of sine, same as sine 45, 0.707. So we're gonna have a, a 0.71 there also. All right. So are we stuck? To solve a system of equations like this, we're gonna solve this by substitution. We're gonna see what T1 equals in terms of T2 and plug that into the other equation. So let me demonstrate. If I divide both sides by 0.87, then we get T1, tension one equals T2 times 0.71 divided by 0.87. 
which is 0 0.816. I'll call it 0 0.882. All right. It doesn't give us number, but we're going to substitute that expression right up here for T1 and see what happens. So T1 is equal to T2 times 0 0.82. And then don't forget we got we substitute that in for t1, so we need to still multiply this by a half. Okay, we took that and put it in right for t1. So there it is, t1 times 0.5 plus we got a t2 times 0.71 equals 29.4. All right, half of 0 0.82 is 0.41. Let's write everything out so it's clear. I don't like to make mistakes. And just like 2x plus 3x is 5x, if we add these two together, we're just going to add their coefficients. 0.41 plus 0.71 is the same thing as t2 times 1.12. I believe that is. Yeah, 0.7 plus. 0.4 is is 1.1, and we've got that extra one there. Okay, so that should be it. That's 29.4. And look, this allows us to solve for tension two. Tension two is 29.4 divided by 1.12, 26.25. got one of them. Now we can find T1. Let's plug it in up there. These equations work together hand in hand. It's kind of like passing off the, the ball. Here, you take it. Run down the field. Here, you take it. Finish up the play. I guess it works for sports like soccer or football or basketball. Handing off the ball. There we go. Darn it. He came up with a sports analogy. All right, so 26.3, I got 26.25 on, on there already. So I'm going to multiply that by 0.82. And there it is, 21.5. We found both of them. All right, let's see if this makes sense. It's a step, that's a step I was kind of missing here. Um, I didn't look back at that, but I uh, always remember that um, at the end, we should check, consider... Does the solution make sense? Just to make sure we didn't make any mistakes. So 21 and a half and 26.3. Let's look at our diagram. Um, I forget which one is which. Tension one is the 21 and a half. All right. So if this is 21 and a half and this one is 26.3, does that make sense? I think it does. Tension two should be a bit higher than tension one because it's more vertical. It's holding more of the weight. 29.4 newtons is the weight pulling down. And these should share that. They're, they're not only, if, if you add up 21 and a half and 26.3, you get like, you know, 47.8. Now that's higher than 29.4. But what they're doing is not only, they're not only supporting that weight, but they're also pulling against each other. So one component of each vector is supporting, helping to support the weight. The total vertical support should be 29.4 newtons. But they're also pulling out against each other. So that's going to add some more strain to the, to the cables. That's why the, the sum of these two is greater than the weight, because they're pulling against each other. But this one, this cable that's more vertical, is holding a bit more of the weight. So that should make sense. They're both less than the, they're both sharing some of the, the load, but they're also pulling against each other. And the more vertical one is the greater one. And that brings us to the end of the episode.